I tried to hold on to the bar as much as I could with my sweaty hands, until they slipped. My feet were now the only thing holding me from plummeting into the piranha-infested waters below. I heard a click, and before I knew it, arrows were flying at my face. One grazed my ear, but I somehow managed to climb to safety. Whose idea was it to make training courses realistic? Remember to hit those like and subscribe buttons so you never miss out on one of these crazy stories. I put on my uniform and headed downstairs for breakfast. The table was crowded with my brothers stuffing their faces and slobbering like bulldogs. What are you eating that for? You know this stuff's for men, said my brother Jackson when I grabbed some of their protein bars. I take the same classes as you do. I need to build muscle too, I replied throwing a donut at his face. The rest of my brothers all grabbed their donuts and were about to throw them at me, but I ducked into the kitchen. I heard their groans when the donuts hit the wall and chuckled. Either you boys clean that wall or I make you clean that wall, yelled my mom at them. She kissed me on the cheek as I headed out to school and threw the bag of daggers I almost forgot at me. I parked my motorcycle at its usual spot and headed in, carrying a monstrosity of bags as always. The girls in my year all seemed to have planned to swarm me on purpose because I heard little yelps and squeals of annoyance that I was hitting them with my bags when there was half a corridor of space for them to walk on. I gave up on making friends with them a long time ago, but an assassin academy is not the best place to make enemies. We can whip you up something tasty if you get hurt too bad in class today, Lana. One of the girls quipped. After that, they all headed into their poisons lab. Yeah, I gotta bring all my food and drink from home in sealed containers. I sat in the conference room bright-eyed and bushy-tailed as always. My squad leader walked in with a list of assignments and I crossed my fingers under the table. Some of the guys around me were already reading the information about the client and target when they all looked up in surprise as the team leader read out my name. I have a client? I asked, bewildered. I wasn't the only one bewildered. No one around me could believe it either. You were specifically requested, actually, said the team leader. What? Shouted my classmates in unison. She's like the worst in class, shouted one. I could barely hear them, though. Finally, finally, I had a chance to prove myself. The client requested that I meet him at a rooftop bar. I had to contain the giggles I felt coming on. I walked all cool thinking I looked like James Bond. I saw my client at the bar and sat next to him, as instructed. Sorry, kid. I'm not here for fun today, he said, dismissing me. I'm here for business too, Mr. Clark. Your business, I clarified. He then fully turned to face me. He asked me if I was Agent Lawson, <laughs> then burst out laughing when I confirmed I was. My cheeks grew piping hot. I thought you were one of your father's boys. I don't want some girl taking out my target. You can't handle it, he said. He then stood up and wanted to make a phone call without another word to me. I don't know how I resisted the urge to throw a bottle at him. When I got back to the academy, my brother Rick was already on his way to meet my client with a signature baseball bat slung over his shoulder. No hard feelings, kid. He said as he walked past me and ruffled my hair. Now him, I did throw a dagger at. But don't worry, the sheath was on it. I was sick and tired of this place. The girls didn't like me because I took the fighting and weapons classes, the ones they thought too gory and barbaric, while they took poisons and traps. The guys didn't like me because I was a girl and still outdid them in class, though they would never admit it. My brothers were always making fun of me because they were known as my assassin's father's sons and accomplished assassins themselves, while I was the newbie. I had all these thoughts running through my mind as I beat up a training dummy in the gym. I was about to go grab knives when I heard the doors open. I wasn't technically supposed to be here alone, so I hid behind some equipment. I expected to hear loud, manly laughter, but instead I heard women's voices whispering. It was a large group of women, women who I had seen around the academy, but they weren't assassins. They were teachers, secretaries, and cooks. And they were being led by… my mom? My feet were glued to the ground as I watched these women grabbing all sorts of weapons and using them with as much skill as professionals. Heck, my mom was better with the flamethrower than my dad. 
My confusion reached its peak, so I came out of the shadows and marched straight to my mom. I wasn't sure what I felt. Pride? Joy? Betrayal? Because there was this badass group of female assassins doing what I wanted to do and my own mother didn't tell me? It was mostly the last thing. Mom, what are you doing here? I asked. Her face paled before she took me aside. I should have told you sooner, baby, she said. I'm not just a chef. I'm an assassin on the side, she explained. She told me she only became a chef because she loved knives so much. Because she and dad had decided when my eldest brother was born that they shouldn't both be assassins. But when you kids grew up, I wanted to go back to work. Though your dad says it's too dangerous. My mom explained. She introduced me to the rest of the group. They were all women who couldn't be certified assassins for one reason or another. So they formed a small organization. They made money by taking the academy's files and taking out targets, then going to the client with proof and collecting the money. I heard a rumor that someone was swooping in on the cases, but I thought that's all it was. I spent the evening training with all of these ladies. They were all impressed by my level of skill and complimented my mom. Then they all huddled together and whispered something to her. My mom smiled from ear to ear. Lana, do you want to join our organization? She asked me. I almost broke my neck nodding so hard. God, I was ecstatic. My mom said she had a client that contacted her personally, and we had a huge job coming up that weekend. I walked around so smug and happy until the weekend came that my brothers were scared I did something to their food whenever we ate. Mom, it's a little cramped in here, I said in my little corner of the porta potty. The weekend had finally arrived and we had to get to our mission in a few minutes. Give me a sec, she said applying lipstick while looking in a little compact mirror. I complained that the dresses from the femme fatale department at the academy were so uncomfortable. I am in love with these shoes though. I said. Then my mom warned me to be careful not to activate them unless I really needed them. I was amazed as we walked up the stairs of the most luxurious museum in the city. The red carpet was full of celebrities and politicians. My first mission and at a gala. My mom and I covered our faces with fans and walked through the entrance as fast as possible to avoid the cameras. Once inside the magnificent hall, some of the ladies from the organization took us to our seats. They were all there in different disguises. There was a black envelope under my mom's plate. She opened it while I kept a lookout. It was the details of our target. Who is it, mom? I asked impatiently. My mom looked at me with wide eyes and a paling face. I got worried just looking at her. And then I saw the name. It was the Dean of the Assassin Academy. I started saying, mom, we can't when she cut me off saying, we have to, it's the job. We looked around for the Dean. He was sitting at a large table surrounded by local politician and the last person I wanted to see there, my dad. My mom saw him too and I could see the gears turning in her head. She quickly pulled me to the side. I can distract him, but you're gonna have to finish the job, she whispered. I could tell she was worried about me and I was too. I didn't think the target would be this much of a big shot or that I'd have to do this alone. I believe in you, my mom said, stroking my cheek before she went over to greet my dad and the dean with a big movie star smile. <coughs> Meanwhile, the pit of anxiety in my stomach almost made me throw up. I watched the dean all night. There weren't many opportunities, but I was informed that he reserved a room in the hotel next door to take a nap after dinner. Typical rich old man. My mom and my dad were dancing when I gave her a subtle nod saying, I'm on it. She smiled at me and then my dad twirled her away and they were out of sight. I had to find a way into the hotel without being seen. I'm sure the creepiest smile grew on my face when I remembered my shoes. I went outside into the alley between the museum and the hotel. The Dean was on the top floor. With the click of my heels, the stilettos retracted into flats and the soles became sticky. I pried them off the ground and started climbing the side of the hotel. When I got to the Dean's floor, I made sure no one was in the room before I cut the window with my ring and climbed in. I could hear the Dean on the phone in the other room. Suddenly, it all felt too real. 
I felt faint and was about to climb back out the window when a hand grabbed me and pulled me into the bathroom. I started panicking, but the light turned on and it was… the dean's wife? You have to go through with it, she said. She revealed that she was the client. He's corrupt. He takes good people out when politicians ask him to, she explained. I couldn't understand why she was with him if he was such a horrible person. Do you think he would ever let me be with anyone else? She said. Her eyes growing teary is what really did it for me. I patted the sides of my legs to feel my weapons and walked out of the bathroom. I found the dean sitting in a big leather chair, smoking a cigar like some villain. I also left him in that chair, but he wasn't smoking anymore. I had a lot of mixed feelings about what had happened, but the confusion cleared up when I went back to school a few days later. The academy looked completely different. It was much darker, but less cold. There were books everywhere and portraits and the lessons were louder. I guess the former dean's style was wiped out with him. I heard over the intercom that I was requested at the dean's office. That's when I realized I had no idea who the new dean was. I hurried over there and found the same big leather chair in the office. I could see a hand holding a lit cigar. The chair swiveled around to reveal the dean's wife. I didn't think he'd be so kind as to leave the academy for me, she said smugly. Things are going to be a little different around here now. I grinned at her. This place was due for a change.